Hello, welcome back to another episode of Internal Rambles. This is a bonus episode continuing to recap and review Married at First Sight Denver. This is your girl Rochelle and I am recapping episode 8 that was titled Divorce, Prayers, and Spider Scares. And child, the folks are continuing to be a hot mess this season. <laughs> What is going on? I thought last season was a hot mess dot com slash org dot net, but this one is also a hot mess. Is anyone going to make it to decision day and make it past decision day? I'm not sure. <laughs> they already had one couple not even get married and it's not looking too great for another couple but I'll get into it thank you for tuning in I truly appreciate it let's get into this episode alrighty alrighty okay so the episode starts off with the married couples standing in front of the hotel they're having just a little chit chat before they all go to the airport and return home it's time for them to go back to the real world and move in as husband and wife as you probably know if you ever watch the show the show sets them up in their own apartment and they live together for the rest of their time until decision day so that's what they're going to do, get their stuff from their own respective places and move into their shared temporary apartment. So they're all waiting and Orion and Lauren, or Lauren's looking sad and depleted because she is. And so someone asked them, hey, how are you guys doing? And Lauren's like, you know, to be honest, I'm not doing so great. And they're like, well, we, we're glad that you're being honest. What's going on? And they're both very coy. They don't say specifically what's occurring in their marriage. But Lauren does share that they're having irreconcilable differences. And Orion says that they're just going through things that they didn't expect to happen. Um, and they're just having some challenges. And so the other couples are like okay you know I understand that you all may not want to talk about it but whenever you know we're all here for you we'll support you and all that good jazz so everyone else is excited to get back home excited to move in with each other and excited to get back to their home lives we next see Emily. She's very excited to move in. She, her and Brennan get to their apartment and she's just planning. She's like, yeah, we got to stock the fridge. We got to buy laundry stuff. She loves their new apartment. She's like, oh my God, I love the decor. I love the colors. I love, oh my goodness. She's just very ecstatic. Brennan, on the other hand, he barely is talking. He's looking around. He says he's excited, but his nonverbals say otherwise. And so they sit down. And so she's like, okay, you know, so what's next? What are we going to do? How are we going to figure this all out? And he's like, well, you know, are you going to work here? And she's like, yeah, you know, I work from home. You know, I'm going to work here. He's like, well, I have a really busy schedule. I don't really want to deal with traffic. I'm just going to go home and I'm going to work from home. I'm going to go back to my place and then I'll stay at my place for a few days. And then let's revisit us moving in after a couple of days. And she's like, scoo, scoo, what? Totally blindsided her with that information. He had never said anything about not moving in. She was very excited. That was never a discussion or a topic. Never even came up. Never was a thought to her. And understandably so. They were both moving into the apartment. Like, which is always the plan. You 
come from the honeymoon you get your stuff from your own apartment and then you move in like that's what's supposed to happen so she's like okay I guess that's what we can do (laughs) she agrees with it but she doesn't really agree with it but she's like okay we you know let's go back to our own place and then we'll move in later I guess so like I mentioned in my last recap they there was some sort of a switch you can notice it when he gets annoyed with her when she asks him in last episode do you like to have fun and he just kept repeating that question over and over again you see like a bit of a switch where he starts to kind of disengage with her whatever happened happened and he starts to detach around that time so child something going on okay (laughs) okay but she's confused she doesn't know what's going on but she I think she doesn't want to ruffle any feathers and she goes along with them not moving into the apartment together just yet another couple that has trouble in paradise what is going on in this god darn show so they do not move in with each other right away Next, we have Cameron and Claire. They go to their shared apartment. They're both excited about moving in together. Claire is worried about them annoying each other and that, and just, I think, basically just having conflict. And Cameron says that he's not really worried. He's more, he's not worried about her annoying him, that he's more (laughs) worried about him annoying her. And that they both just agree that they just need to continue to make sure that they are effectively communicating with each other, especially if there's an issue. Claire really um, stresses that she doesn't want them to hold on to any concerns or issues because he's like, you know what, I'm just going if I got if I got a problem, I'm just going to hold on to it and see how far it goes. And she's like, child, don't do that. (laughs) Don't let it snow you know don't let them you know it snowball into a huge issue when we could resolve it at the lowest level like don't do that please don't do that Uh. (laughs) um next lauren shares that so lauren and uh, orion arrive at the apartment and she states that on the plane home listen i'm tired of orion and his games but i'll get to this i'll get to that later on the plane he says that he wants to do a full reset that that he wants to start over start from the beginning and just start from fresh not with there being issues not going back and forth forgive and move on and so she asked him well do you think that you are able to do that can you do a full reset he says you know I think I can but let's take some time apart and let me think things over and then we can reconvene and then I can really truly decide so they do not move in he does not move in to the apartment when I tell you I know Lauren is exhausted because like I said he drains me he says one thing at 302 but by 555 it's another thing say what you need when they say stand on business stand on your word and she has said this to him say what you mean bro but then period don't ain't no comma (laughs) ain't no colon Ain't, ain't, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no apostrophe. That's it. He just goes back and forth so much. It's like, well, okay, so what? What? What do you mean right now? Like, what's the what's the meaning today? Oh my gosh. So, anyways, he says, oh, "Well, you know, I think I can, but let me let you know in a few days." <sighs> so, more on them a little bit later. Emily 
goes to Brendan's apartment to see how he lives, how he lived when he was single. And she's just very positive and very conversational. Brendan barely speaks. It almost looks like he bar- he barely looks at her in the eye, but that could just be me, me being me. I don't know if that really happened. <laughs> But he he definitely just is very minimal engagement, minimal conversation. And she's just like, I don't know what is going on. What has happened since the honeymoon? He was not like this. I'm trying with him and it's just such a change. And he's like, you know, I, you know I'm still going to be here at my apartment. I'm still going to work here. We'll reconvene in a few days and we'll discuss moving in he doesn't say well I'll move in in a few days he just says it'll be a discussion and I'm like Brennan done checked out he ain't saying it but his actions are speaking volumes okay volumes and he's dressing Emily out okay okay um (laughs) uh Cameron and Claire. Claire goes to Cameron's place and that was a really positive experience. She gets to see more about him and his life and she gets to see like his medals that he's done for uh, marathons that he's done and that he has done rescue missions, uh, mountain climbing missions, rescue missions. She's like, I didn't know any of this. I didn't know you did any of this. And he's like, well, if you just would have asked me, I would, I would have told you. I would have told you. And she's like, I'm pretty sure I've asked like what your hobbies were, and you know, I don't know. Cameron's a very interesting uh, individual. Like, I think he's the type of person like he will tell you things, but you really have to like ask specific questions, or you know, in order for him to tell you, he'll give you specific answers if you ask him specific questions (laughs) and Austin shows Becca his apartment he actually has a roommate and so one of the things is that Austin is he states to Becca when we after decision day because we both have leases we should just move back into our own apartment our own homes until our leases run out and then we'll figure out where we're going to live and and Becca was like uh uh, no since you have a roommate it doesn't make sense that I would move in with you you could just move in with me because my lease is month to month I'm not locked in like you are just move in with me and and we'll be all good I don't even know what that was but Becca was like I ain't letting you go boo just move on with me and we'll be good (laughs) And a little bit later, we see a moment with Lauren. She's doing her hair and she shares that, of course, Orion has flipped again and texted her that he wants a divorce. He ain't going to be able to do it. I try. Ain't no reset. I'll be on the show, but I ain't trying to be married to you. And Lauren was like, I can't even decipher what that means. I'm pretty sure in order to be on the show, you got to be married. So you all right? You all right? It reminds me of, I can't think of her name, but she didn't want to be married to old boy. But she was like, I'll still be a part of the show. I still do the group meetups, but I ain't going to be married. I'm not going to be married to you. (sighs) Okay. I have a lot to say, I think, but I'm going to hold it to the end, okay, because there's more to come. Because all of the married couples meet with different experts, Pastor Cal, Dr. Pia, and Dr. Pepper, okay? So, Pastor Cal, he meets with Emily and Brennan because they need some help. It's like SOS help emergency emergency something's going on please help these folks (laughs) 
so Pastor Kyle, he jumps right in. He's like, okay, so y'all didn't move in together. Por qué? Because why? What's going on? And so I don't even know what BS Brennan said, but basically Emily shares because Emily tried to beat around the bush and Emily's like, I don't know what's going on. There's a disconnect here. He's not sharing emotions. He didn't want to move in. So Brendan is just like, I don't know what happened. I just don't feel any romantic feelings. I've tried. I've tried to maybe get affectionate with her, but I just can't. There's a block here. I don't know what the block is. She's an amazing girl, but I ain't feeling it. So then Dr. I mean, not Dr. Pastor Cal. Y'all know I love me some Pastor Cal. He was like, let me ask you a question. <laughs> He's like, let me just, let me break this down real quick. Are you not attracted to Emily? I'm not going to answer that. I, I can't answer. I'm not going to be, I'm on TV. I'm not going to come off no kind of way. And he's like, I'm not trying to make you, Pastor Kyle's like, I'm not trying to make you come off no kind of way, but I'm just trying to understand you, at first it was, you were fine. And now you're like, I just, I can't, I, I just can't, I don't know what it is. I just, I can't be romantic. I don't feel nothing for her. I just did something switched. So what was a switch? Like, so Brendan wouldn't answer that. He And so Pastor Cal said, you, you are coming in with expectations that you should feel this and you should do that. You have to understand this is not your typical relationship. And this is going to be different than your, you married at first sight. So whatever you feel like you should be feeling by this time Throw that out the window. Throw those expectations out the window. This is different. That you will feel whatever you're supposed to feel when you, whenever you feel it. So when you have, when you stop having expectations, especially unreasonable expectations, and you stop putting so much pressure on yourself, then maybe you you will be able to have a feeling or three. <laughs> and that makes sense. You know, uh, it made sense to me. So after, at the end of the day, Brennan did say that he, he is still wanting to, he's not giving up on the marriage. He wants to try. And he's like, I do think I need to move in. Me not being here and being fully present is not going to help the matter. And Pastor Cal's like, eh, yeah, you think <laughs> he doesn't do that, but you know, of course. So after Pastor Cal leaves, Emily wants to continue the discussion and she says to him, answer this question, though. Are you not attracted to me? Because that's really important. I'm not going to answer that. I don't want to hurt your feelings. And I just I, I can't answer that. And. She says to him, by you not answering that question, you do know that you are answering the question, right? I haven't said anything. I'm not saying anything. But no, like, not saying anything. Because if you were attracted to her, you would say, yeah, I am attracted to you. By you not saying anything, it definitely... And I think a very fair assumption would be you don't find her attractive or you're very minimally attracted to her, which is very interesting because even if she's not his type, she is very pretty. Like, what is, are you all right? I don't, I don't get it. I do think some of her antics, she can be very immature. That may have caused a switch for him, whereas maybe he does find her physically attractive but her personality may be a little stressful for him (laughs) I wonder if that is because I do feel like he did say he thought she was pretty in the beginning maybe I'm making that up but I thought so I I do think I wonder if it's some of her immaturity and her that's kind of clouding some stuff for him I don't know. It may be couple number three with trouble 
in paradise and maybe headed down the road of divorce (laughs) and it's so early I'm like oh my goodness so I don't know Pastor Cal also goes to see Austin and Becca and they show that they've been doing really well communicating everything's going very positively they have not consummated the marriage Austin wants to wait and just wants to find the right time and really just continue to get to know Becca more before they zoom zoom in the boom boom (laughs) and then one of the things that they wanted to discuss with Pastor Cal is just religion because uh, Austin is Christian Becca is agnostic and just how that may be an issue for them down the line Austin is okay with Becca's religious choices but I think it's just down the line if they raise children how that may manifest etc and so Pastor Cal basically just says to them well what's the basis or the core of your religion religious beliefs and both of them said that it's love loving one another loving people and Pastor Cal says as long as the two of you focus that and there's mutual respect the two of you should be okay and Becca gets emotional because she says that she's been ostracized in the past from loved ones due to her religious decisions and so Pastor Cal says that you're with someone who is not doing that to you and just remember that so it was a positive meeting with Pastor Cal Last but not least, Orion and Lauren meet with Dr. Pia. Ciao, ciao, ciao. So basically, I don't even, I'm going to try to sum this up because it was a lot. But Lauren shares that initially when they came home it was we're gonna do a reset this is what Orion had said we're gonna start over but then prior to Dr. Pia getting there he texts he texts that he wants a divorce so she says it's been such a roller coaster but he just seems to not want to try anymore and so Dr. Pia questions that with Orion and Orion basically says, you know, I thought maybe I could, I would be able to, but after having some time away and really processing and really thinking, you know, I just don't, I don't, I don't know if I can do that. Lauren, when we get into an argument or a discussion, especially about issues that we're having, she just goes to zero to 100 and I just can't deal with that. I have yet to see Lauren go from zero to 100. Does she call Orion out on his stuff? yeah Mm mm-hmm and understandably so because it's a lot of stuff to call Orion out on when you are passionate about something do you get a little elevated but zero to 100 what's that and I think you know this goes to the stigma I think that is on black women in particular this perception of the angry black woman anytime there's a little bit of an ang- elevated voice or whatever oh my goodness oh lord there they go you know it's like child please I didn't see it and Dr. Pia said to Ryan that not only did Lauren not handle certain things appropriately but it was Orion too like he doesn't own his stuff enough because he likes to push everything well she just I can't she just be her 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 and it's like bro all right when when you gonna look into the mirror you know man in the mirror come on now and um he says that and you know Dr. P says when you when someone feels as though 
they're not being protected or that there's a lot going on you go to, into protective mode and and there's been times where Lauren has felt like she needed to protect herself and that's what she did and she so Dr. Pia was like I think that the two of you can move past this if you just extend grace to each other truly forgive and let go there's this there's nothing that has happened thus far that the two of you cannot build a bridge and get over it but you have to be willing and she's like you know Lauren are you willing Lauren says yes but you know Ryan he starts doing his little pausing thing and I just don't I really can't I'm not sure bro if you don't so then Lauren says is it that you just don't want to be with me because these excuses don't make sense she doesn't say that part but it, this is what I'm saying so then he finally gets honest because that's I'm like he just don't want her all this I, oh you know you really offended my people or you go from zero to 100 or like these are just piss poor excuses let's just call it a spade a spade right she said do you just not want to be with me like let's just I, i'm tired because this is her just this is her saying i'm i'm tired truth is i'm tired <laughs> sorry he finally gets honest and says, you know what? I've lost all romantic interest in you. There we go. And so Dr. Pia, she interjects and she's like, how does control show up in your life? He's like, I'm not trying to, trying to control. Yes, you are. You are controlling because you felt vulnerable and you're and you feel you feel like you didn't have control in the situation so you're leaving so that you don't have to be vulnerable and hurt anymore you're controlling the situation by leaving you were hurt you felt vulnerable you didn't know what to do so you're leaving like you know what i'm out but let me tell you what what really is going on too I think he was talking to Pastor Cal. I'm not sure who he was talking to, but he mentioned that he comes from a matriarch family where the woman runs the household. He's currently living with mama. And he said, I ain't trying to do that no more. In my household, in my marriage, I'm going to be running the show. And he realized that Lauren is a strong black woman. And even if she lets the man be the household she ain't gonna just be sitting there lying down on the floor letting you run all over her she gonna have a little pushback she's gonna have a voice and she's not a pushover and so he saw the type of woman that he didn't want which is probably similar to his mama and he said oh no i got to get out I'm not going to be married to a woman like my mama. And he didn't give it a chance. He didn't. At the end of the day, they have not learned how to effectively communicate with each other. They had not learned how to resolve issues and what's going to be the, the, you know, communication style best, best for them and the resolution style. They don't know each other like that. Like, like Dr. P said, like, y'all just getting to know each other. But he saw a little glimpse potentially of what the life was going to, what the future made was going to hold. And he said, you know what? Like Chris Brown said, deuces. And he wasted them folks time at that show. He wasted Lauren's time. He wasted my time. He drained Lauren. He drained me. He drained us. And they picked the wrong one. (laughs) So Lauren and Orion are divorced are getting divorced how you say it they they are kaput and i love what lauren said that she cannot wait till she has a husband that fights for her and their marriage as much as she fights for him and their marriage 
Because in no way, shape, form, or fashion did that man really put effort in that relationship or marriage. He got a little, you know, a little friction, a little heat, and he got on up out that kitchen. And at the end of the day, I'm glad that he didn't draw it out and waste her time long, long, long into this show and and into that marriage. Because he is, that would have just been truly a waste of time. And that's that. That's this episode. So, uh, all the best to Lauren. And I don't have, you know, all the best to you, Orion, but you wasted folks' time. Emily and Brennan. I don't know what's going on, Brennan. I just think something happened. I, I think, I don't, I'm not sure. But he needs to move in and really give a good old college try and experience her and really get to know her before he checks all the way out so it's not looking great for emily and brennan but i have like 10 percent of hope austin and, and becca they seem to be doing fine i hope that they continue on a positive path they are the ones that are doing the best currently cameron and claire are not doing bad either they, i still have a lot of hope for them too so we shall see i think they need to give lauren a reset <laughs> find her somebody else child but that is that that is the recap of episode eight married at first sight denver i forgot to mention this in my episode my thursday episode this week i forgot to go back to it i was gonna make a little mention about ready to love ready to move make a move that show (laughs) is so interesting it because i really think the women need help in picking their men they're not making the best decisions it's so evident at who's staying who's not staying who it's seeming it's seeing like the matchmaker is making a little more effort to intervene which is good it's needed that's the whole point of a matchmaker is to help make the match not leave them to their own devices <laughs> and opinions and decisions so we shall see i don't know i don't know but anyways thank you for tuning in if you haven't listened to my previous recaps please do so like comment and subscribe if you're listening on youtube and i would love to know if there are any other shows i could be watching i want to switch it up and do something different if there especially if there are any upcoming reality shows it'd be nice to do some new shows hit me up on my official page internal rambles podcast.com on the contact page or leave me a voicemail internal rambles podcast.com i feel like i said that really fast (laughs) and let me know and i hope that you have a great weekend and until next episode this is your girl rochelle